uh, I started doing martial arts since I was very young, traditional martial arts. Um, I did uh, Charlie Foot with my father, who teaches in Chicago. And then, um, then in the summer, sometimes he would send me to Hong Kong to train Wing Chun with Wong Sun Nung, and, um, which I really enjoyed, you know, I learned a lot from him. And then, um, when I was in America, I actually, it was funny because I, I got my master's degree in uh, art education. But I had this dream that I wanted to come to Hong Kong to do action movies, you know, like my heroes when I was young. And, um, and then I did, you know, through some introductions, I, I met some people and I was very lucky and um, started off as a uh, stunt choreographer uh, for a movie called um, Star Runner. And then uh, after that, I got signed to a uh, management company and then started doing more acting and more different roles, you know, started off really small, then, you know, got lucky, got more and more stuff. And, and um, I'm here now. <laughs> Well, I was very lucky because um, previously I did another movie. There was um, this all like, it's a romantic comedy. It was all like acting. So, and uh, that had a really good chance to kind of hone my acting skills more than just doing the stunt work. Then when it came to this movie, uh, which was, uh, I was very lucky because Benny, um, the director, he was very cool. He, he, did, he didn't care if you're, you know, who you were or whatever. As long as you worked hard, he gave you a lot of direction. And um, he, was, he was very clear in his direction. So that was easy for me. So when I came in to do the role, um, I thought it was, um, he told me what I had to do. So the first thing I had to do to get in the character was I, I figured, you know, if I was a, kind of like this um, kind of cocky bad guy, right, I'd bleach my hair. So that's what I did. I bleached my hair blonde. And then he came in, he saw it, and he liked it. So I kept it that way. And then um, in terms of uh, action, but I, I wasn't too worried about that because I, I've done action previously before and did a lot of stunt work. So I wasn't too worried too much about that. And I was working with people who were professionals. Um, so it was OK. The way I prepare for any film in terms of martial arts is I think because I have a good martial arts background, I wouldn't say good, but I mean, I have a very solid martial arts background because I've just been training for a long time because I really enjoy it. I think it's just um, working on your cardiovascular because you know you have to do a scene over and over and over again. You don't just, I mean, when the audience sees like a, maybe like a one minute fight scene, it takes two days to film, you know, and, and those two days you're not nonstop, especially in Hong Kong. And uh, so cardiovascular is a big deal and flexibility is a big thing because um, you might have the moves, but if you're, you're not warm and sometimes you're, you're called on to work when you're not warm. You're waiting around the set, you know, like blah, 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 blah. Hey, Phil, it's your turn now. And you have to just run and go do it. So I think um, being flexible is very important. So I think um, as any athlete and any kind of uh, martial artist, you know, if, you, if you're thinking about getting in the industry, I think really cardiovascular and flexibility are the two most important things. So that's what I would do. I, would, I do a lot of stretching. I do a lot of running. And... Um, and I don't do so much forms anymore, you know. I'm more so I would maybe like do a lot of uh, a lot of boxing and stuff like that to get get my rhythm better. Because I think you know when you're doing fighting for movies, it's it's more about rhythm rather than like you're doing a whole form. Those more flashy movements uh, was actually more wushuish kind of things. And uh, back back when I was training, um, martial arts tricks was was just was just starting to get popular. And I think it was more in the West Coast. I grew up in Chicago, so I mean everything is a little, you know travels over a little bit slower. But thank God for the internet, right? So um, I guess what we did was I, I trained with some wushu instructors because my father's a kung fu teacher, and um, actually he's an accountant, but he's a kung fu teacher on the side, right? But uh, his a lot of his friends were martial arts teachers, and I was very lucky that I was able to get instruction from them. And then, um, instead of learning like maybe like a whole form or something, I would say, hey, can you uh, work, teach me, you know, work on my tornado kick or my, my 360 and stuff like that? And then I would go into, a, there's a local uh, gymnastics center by my house and which I would go to and just work on tricks with people who are martial artists and also who are um, gymnastics people. And this, I just did that. Since being a martial arts teacher, I think, I think um, people like Nick and um, Andy, they might come to me for advice, but I mean, Obviously, there are certain things that they know that I don't. Obviously, like Nick has a lot more experience in movies, and, and as well as Andy, right? So they, they bring that to me. But sometimes, if, if they're doing a movie, like, for instance, like um, we're doing Wing Chun, um, even though Nick has a good background in Wing Chun from another, another Sifu that he's been training with, on the set, he might ask me a few questions because, like, oh, Phil, um, should my Tan Sao be here, or should it be like this, like that? And I would tell them. But I mean, uh, on the side, when we train, we do train together. Um, you know, contrary to popular belief, we don't just play Warcraft. 
uh, when we train together, we mainly what we do is um, uh, just hit the mitts, just get boxing. Because I think boxing, if you can get a good boxing background and learning how to hit, the other, I mean, unless you're doing a specific form for a specific traditional movie, I think that's the kind of training that's that's the best. You know, we do a lot of flexibility training and and uh, and punching, so a lot of kickboxing type stuff. And um, I think uh, besides that, really, we don't we don't do much. And we work on tricks too, like um, like Andy. Andy is, a, I have to say, he's also. I'm very lucky to meet all these geniuses, right? Because um, he uh, like there's this move called 720. It's a seven. You do you turn twice and then you kick out and uh, he did that for Star Runner. I remember uh, it took me like I don't know like two months to get that move. I, I told him the basics of how to do it and I think he figured it out in like three days and he didn't do it from a standing position. So you know we work on tricks too and stuff like that. Nicholas, he's very athletic and he's very smart. He's a very smart guy. I mean, I mean, he has no real formal training, like um, a lot of art, martial arts actors. No, like when I say formal training, I mean like you know, training since the age of seven or something. Like 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 myself, he I mean, he does a lot of other things, like play guitar. I mean, he has a lot of other skills. But when in terms of coming to martial arts, the thing that I was most impressed about him when I first met him was, first of all, his physique. Um, he has this weird metabolism that keeps him fit no matter what he eats. And another thing is, he has this incredible memory. And if you, if you tell him, if you like go through like 30 moves or something, he'll remember it. And then um, another thing is, he, all, he likes to interject his own ideas, which makes it more his own kind of style. So I think in that aspect, he, he's very good. I mean, if he had more like, even more, more like uh, formal training, I think it'd be even more spectacular. But I mean, I, I would rate him as one of, the, one, of the, one of the better action stars in Hong Kong right now. I did a TV series with Nick uh, before um, uh, we did this movie. So we were quite acquainted with each other and, uh, and our skill levels in terms of uh, martial arts and also uh, choreography. And uh, I was very lucky to be working with him because we were such good friends. And we didn't really, ha there's a lot of unspoken, we didn't have to talk and we knew what we, each other wanted. And uh, we knew that we didn't have that much opportunity to fight in this movie. You know, we wanted to, but I mean, in terms of the story, there wasn't much opportunity for us to do it. So but there was one where we were gonna fight each other in the cab. And I said, oh, it's such a small area. We can do kind of like a Wing Chun exchange, but a little bit more modern. I mean, I mean, Nick, we're just kind of making up moves on the spot and kind of doing this whole long choreography. And Benny saw it, and he's like, "Oh, that's cool, you know? Why don't you do that?" And uh, I remember the, the choreographer, he saw, and he's like, oh, "Okay, you guys just take care of it, you know, whatever." And then so we did it. And um, but I mean, I think in the end it was cut a little bit shorter. I think just for time constraints, and you know, I mean, maybe it didn't flow with the story too well. I'm not sure, but originally it was a lot longer. It was a lot longer. And, um, but uh, I mean, what, I think whatever, whatever came out of it was fine. But I, of course, I'd rather see the, the longer cut, of course. But, but I mean, the end it was fine. Maybe I'm sure we'll have opportunities to fight again. It was actually one of the first stunts that I actually had to do in terms of stunts. It wasn't really a big stunt either. It was uh, involved, obviously, you know, if you see the movie, I uh, jump off from the tram. I'm being chased by Nick's character. I jump off the tram on top of the, um, I don't know what that's called, the canopy, and I think that concrete canopy, and then from there I had to jump on the ground. And I was given these really thin Converse-like shoes, and um, they're like, Phil, one shot, do it. Just jump off and then run out of frame. And uh, as soon as I did that, I felt my ankle kind of twist a little bit. And, I, and they're like, are you okay? I'm okay, let's do it again. So I did a few times, but after a few times, I, I really hurt my ankle really bad. And um, that was like one of the first shots. So I mean, the rest of the fight scenes and the chasing scenes that you see in the movie, regardless if they're you know sequentially before or after the scene, I was really hurt like during the whole thing. So that was a challenge for me because there was a lot of running. The whole rooftop scene, 
a lot of the jumps, you know, I did myself, like from one store down. I mean, of course, there's kind of there's a mat there, right? There's a tatami there, but still, you know, it was it was quite a challenge. But I mean, I, I did it. I, I think I pulled it off. And it was also I was very lucky because my character wasn't supposed to be really suave in terms of action. Like he wasn't like a great parkour guy or anything. He was kind of clumsy, so it was it was easy to do because my leg was hurt. <laughs> There's a chase scene on the rooftop that, um, that I think was very memorable in the, in, in the movie. I think a lot of people, when they see the movie, they remember it. And um, that scene was uh, challenging and fun because um, I know what uh, the martial arts choreographer, Ji So, what I was always, when I seen his other movies, the most I was impressed about like his, his, his work is a lot of the chase scenes that he does. And I was very excited to be part of that kind of, kind of scene. And um, the challenging part, obviously, was my ankle. You know, it was hurt, and, and I, I told you about that. Um, and in terms of uh, being doubles, and uh, we actually did all of our own stuff. There are certain times where, because you know, when you film a when you film a scene, you don't just film it once. You have to film it over and over and over and over again. So some of the times when you can't really tell is us, maybe there's doubles. But I mean, we but all of us have done those motions as well. When when the shots needed, when you can actually tell is is us. Um, we actually do those shots. But there's certain times, obviously, just to keep the actors from being fatigued and exhausted, they, they have doubles to, to, do, to do certain shots. So actually, we've pretty much done everything ourselves. People got hurt in this, in this movie, not, not just myself. And um, obviously, Wu Jing, um, he uh, had a lot more scenes than I did. And in one of the previous scenes that he did, he hurt his knee. <laughs> When he jumped, even though we had a wire, obviously, from that height, when he landed, he had to put a lot of weight on the leg that wasn't hurt. So he always would lose his balance. And um, I remember the, uh, there was also footage before that he almost fell off, and Nick grabbed him. Uh, Jai Ting Feng grabbed him. And uh, so second time, because we're kind of, no, I, I mean, I want to make sure, maybe because of my background as a stunt coordinator, I, safety is very important for me, right? So I, 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 I kind of, paid attention to him as he was falling. So as he jumped, it seemed like he was gonna fall off again. I mean, he had a wire on, he wouldn't have got hurt, but you know, there's a chance, you know, you don't want someone to fall off a building. So I rushed in to grab him before, before he fell off the building after the jump. And there's a bunch of pipes on the, bil um, on the side. I think they're sewage pipes actually. And uh, my foot got caught and I, I, I broke one. And so sewage was flying everywhere. But I mean, as soon as that happened, I kind of just kind of walked away like that wasn't me. It was some gang, you know, but, but I mean, in the end, it was, it was okay. But um, we got the shot done, and if you see the whole scene, I think it turned out really well. This is the first time I've worked with Wu Jing. He's, uh, he's a real cool guy. I mean, the, the first thing I noticed about him was he's pretty down to earth, right? I mean, I've worked with a lot of people, I mean, um, behind the scenes and, and in front of the camera. And, um, and, and a lot of very skilled people, right? But I think the most important thing is if, if the person is, is a nice guy, you know, it, it's easy to work with. And I thought he was very easy to work with. And, and he was very fun. We had a lot of fun on the set, uh, a lot of things to talk about. And, um, and the thing I liked about him was when he does the martial arts fighting, he, he hits hard. I mean, he does it. I mean, he doesn't hit hard enough to kill you, but he does it. And that's the way I like to do it. And I think that's the way that Nick likes to do it. And, it's easier for me to act, and it's easier for, for me to do a reaction. I don't have to always fake the reaction because I actually feel it. So there's a scene when, um, in, in, the, in the warehouse when they come in and they try to take my weapons or whatever and, and whatnot. He, he slaps me continuously. And actually, I, I said to him, I said, Wait, well, gang, you're going to hit me, right? Don't worry, just, just hit me. And he, he didn't say anything, he just smiled. And I, I, I knew he was <laughs> he's got to smack me because I was tied up like this, right? And um, so he just went off and he just kind of slapped and, and we did the whole scene. We only did it, did it a few times, but um, I, I remember getting slapped, I don't know, like, to me it seemed like 150 times, but I think it was just like 30 times, I'm not quite sure. But, but um, and then I think ended up uh, after the, the cut, it was only a few times in the, in the scene. So 
he actually, we we're talking afterwards, after we met, and he's like, wow, I feel bad for you, Phil. I slapped you so many times, and only three or four, only three or four slaps got into the movie. But um, well, that was cool. But I think, I think like, mainly, I think, um, I like the way he fights because he's, he's powerful. I mean, if you see like um, a lot of the older masters like, like Sammo, Sammo Hong and, um, and Jackie and Yun Biu, I mean, when they hit, I mean, they really, it's, it seems like they're really making a contact. You, you make sure those guys are tough. And I think he, he has the same feeling, the same quality. And that's what I like about him. Andy On is my best friend in, in, in Hong Kong, I have to say, just because we have the same interests, uh, we both do martial arts, and we both like the same things. And basically, we see each other every day, you know, because we hang out all the time. And um, it's a shame that we didn't get more scenes together. Um, but, which is good because he kind of smells funny. No, I'm, I'm just kidding, obviously. But uh, he's, uh, I, I don't know, he's, um, a lot of people might think of him as this kind of a muscle-bound kind of kung fu actor, right? But a lot of people, well, I think they're starting to know now, but he's a great actor. He's, a, he's one of the best actors I know. And, and I think for him, he doesn't, it's not so much preparation or training, it's just he's naturally a good actor. If you give him a scene, you get once the camp. I mean, if you're rehear, doing rehearsals, because I've done more than one movie with him, and if you're doing rehearsals, maybe during the rehearsals, he's not like. It seems like he's not putting his heart into it. But once the camera rolls, you know, he's. That's it. I mean, you. you I mean, I, he can draw. I mean, I. You know the guy so well, and when you watch a movie and he's in it and he's doing like, an emotional scene and you, it draws emotions out of me, even though I know him so well, then you can tell. Is you know, I'm sure people who don't know him. Like personally, when they see him, they can draw those emotions out too. So I think the most, I think the thing that I want to say about that guy is he's a great actor, not just a martial arts actor. He's a great actor. There's this uh, Japanese uh, full contact fighting competition called um, called Heroes, um, which is an MMA competition, and uh, I bought some discs that I, I got and um, to to the set, and I remember uh, showing Benny, you know, the, these discs. And I, I know Benny's a really good director. He's always trying to keep everything on time and everything. I remember one time he was like, we're watching this fight. And he's like, he's watching it, he's watching it. And uh, the assistant director comes by and he says, oh, excuse me, sir, um, you know, it's ready for the next shot. He's like, hold on, let me finish watching this fight first. It was the first time, the first time I seen him do that, which is kind of funny because we're, you know, it's, he's so professional, you know, but he was so into this. And which is really cool because like, that we had something in common, you know. He, he not only did he like do cool martial arts movies, he was actually into martial arts and full contact fighting. So that's, an, I think that's another funny story. Uh, there's a funny story behind the whole hair thing too because I was doing another movie at the time which overlapped like, like this, like this is uh, Invisible Target and this is the other movie. And in that movie I had that black hair. And then um, I remember like I had to dye it, ble bleach it and then dye it black again and then come back to do Invisible Target one more day and then bleach it blonde again and then go back to black again. So, but I'm very lucky because I have really, I don't know, really coarse hair, bad hair, I don't know. I've, it's, it's not, it's not, it's, my hairstylist is always, come, you know, he's like, wow, your hair is very resilient, right? So I was very lucky that it didn't, that my hair didn't fall off. But, um, but uh, the thing is like, I just dyed it black again. After, after the movie. After the movie was done, I just kind of left it black and let it grow out. And, and my hair grows pretty quick, so I wasn't too worried about that. <laughs> the first time I saw the movie was uh, during the premiere. And I was very impressed. Actually, I, I thought it was a very well-produced film. The reason I say that is because there's so many characters in the film. And there's, and there's a limited time, you know, there's, you know, was it an hour and a half, hour, 45 minutes? And um, every, every character's story, I mean, even like characters like mine and even uh, Lee Chan Sam, Sam, maybe it's a little bit kind of like a um, cameo roles. I mean, they filled those stories out really well and everything flowed and the story w worked out well. And which was, it's not easy to do. I mean, as you know, you know, doing a story with that many characters. Um, I thought that was great. And another one, person that I, I was really, really impressed with 
besides everyone else I was impressed with was, was JC. Because I mean, I, you know, we're all friends, right? You know, we all hang out and we all know how we are in real life. And, um, you know, we're all just like, you know, like kids, you know, hanging around and everything. But he was really able to pull out some emotions out of me. Like, I actually wrote about this, you know, in my blog as soon as I saw that movie. And um, I said, because, you know, this, the ending scene with him getting, getting beat up by Ging, I was really touched. You know, I was like, wow, I, I almost, you know, almost cried. If I didn't know him, I probably would have. But, I mean, I, I was really surprised by that. And... Um, in terms of um, my stuff, I think, you know, I, I was, like I said, I, I would rather have seen the, um, uh, the little bit longer fight scene with me and Nick in the cab. But um, besides that, I, I was just really, really happy that um, Benny kept it as one shot, that when I was on the ground kind of crying and, and explaining the whole situation to him, gang. That, that was, I was really happy about that. Being a Christian, I think it's just a, it's, it's also, I mean, of course, it's a very personal thing, and also it's, um, it, it's just a, it's a faith that I have, and I think there's certain, I mean, it's not even rules that you have to abide by. When you, when you say they're rules, it becomes something you have to do, but it's something that I want to do because I, I feel like there's certain things that I believe in. And um, in terms of not getting into trouble and doing doing a lot of things, which which might which might lead to bad press or whatever, thing, I don't think I don't do certain things so I don't get bad press. I don't honestly really care because I do what I do and I'll do what I do. And being an actor is just a job. It's just a job that I do. And I'm 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 going to continue having fun with my friends. If I'm going to go out and grab a beer, I'm going to go and grab a beer. If there's a reporter there, there's a reporter there. I don't care. You know, what I mean, long as I mean, long as if I I can answer to myself and answer to, to God, then, then I'm fine. So I, I think that's, it doesn't really affect this, what I do at all. Um, and, it, and sometimes I guess it would, certain roles would you take or not take? And I think it's like, um, it's a very, it's also a personal interpretation of, of things. Um, like for instance, like, uh, like uh, I think a lot of Christians aren't, aren't, aren't they, they're very, um, apprehensive about doing movies with ghosts and spirits and everything. And I had this explanation. I said, I, I will do a movie if there were ghosts. I mean, if the movie, if the message is, is, is not completely crazy or whatever, if it's a job that I think is worth doing, I will do it. Because I just did a movie like in, in, in Dragon Squad. I killed like 80 people, you know? I mean, it's all just make-believe, right? You're just making a movie. And when you know that in your heart, and I can answer that to myself, I'm fine. So I, there's no like certain roles that I won't take long as I feel the movie is, 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 is good and it's something that I want to do. So. I guess like um, if I was, if I had the opportunity, if someone came up to me and said, Phil, you know, here's a bunch of money, I want you to do this project, what, what, what kind of project I would want to do. I mean, I have, I have so many ideas in my head and I think a lot of actors do as well. Um, I, I, I want to do like a kind of like a, I want to make mix, mix genre kind of thing. Can I mention other movies? Like um, I don't know if you, Shaun of the Dead is like is a movie that I, w I was very impressed with because like they mix genres, but when they mixed it, it wasn't like a parody. It was a comedy. It was funny. It was a love story. It was a love story, and it was a scary zombie movie at the same time. So I thought maybe something like there's two types of movies that I want to do. One is like a an undead zombie kung fu type movie, but I'm talking about like Western, not not the Gong Si, but the uh, you know like the Western zombies and kung fu type of movie, and and maybe like and also another type of movie I want to do is like a romantic comedy kung fu, but I mean, I want an amalgam of things where it works out rather than being like a parody, and then it's very hard to do, but you know it would be something like that I guess. Not to be boastful, but I think in terms of kung fu movies and action movies, Hong Kong is the place. That's, you know, of course it started with the old westerns, you know, with the old cowboys and whatever, and then Hong Kong took it and developed it and, and made it into something, something else. But I think it has become an art here. And, and, you know, if you want to study the best judo, where do you go? You go to Japan, right? And I think, you know, I think a lot of the um, really, really great stuntmen, I think they're a little bit, they're getting older now. And uh, the new generation may not be uh, as up to par as, as what, you know, maybe in the 80s and 90s, but I still think the art is still here. So I think, I think um, you can get that from a lot of uh, 
Hong Kong or Eastern type movies that you may not be able to get in the West. But I mean, of course, then I've seen a lot of Western movies and they're, they're catching up very quickly and they're doing very well. And they've hired a lot of um, people from Hong Kong to do their, do their stunt work over there. And I think that's making that, you know, a lot of Western movies, um, you know, doing very well. But I think, I think most importantly, I mean, from what I've heard from different uh, sources that has worked with both, both sides, I think the spontaneity of, of Hong Kong movie making is something you can't really find over in the West. I think that's the big thing. When I went to the premiere, it was just like a, it's like when you make a home movie, you know, when you're having a birthday party, you have a home movie, you look back at it, you're like, oh, that was a great time. So when I saw that, for me, as personally, it was like, wow, it was just a reminder of how much fun we had in the set with all friends and everything. It was a really good atmosphere, something that's not always the case when you're making movies.